a divine scripture was sent down to humanity 14 centuries ago. This sacred book is the Quran. From the day of its revelation to the day of judgment, it will remain as the last and sole guide for humanity. There are countless proofs that the Quran is the word of God. In the first film, scientific miracles of the Quran were examined and shown as proof. In this film, we shall continue to look at these scientific miracles that prove that the Quran is the revelation of God. We shall see that a great many scientific facts we have only recently been able to establish using modern day technology, from the layers of the earth to continental drift, and from the gender of a baby to atomic subparticles, were revealed in our book 14 centuries ago. The Big Bang Theory, which the scientific world unanimously accepted in the 20th century, proves that the universe came into being with a giant explosion. One verse of the Quran that revealed this fact 1400 years ago reads, Do not the unbelievers see that the heavens and the earth were sewn together and then we unstitched them, and that we made from water every living thing. So will they not believe? The word rakt, translated as sewn together, means mixed in each, blended in the Arabic vernacular. The phrase, we unstitched, is the verb fataka, and in Arabic it implies the tearing apart of a structure of things that are sewn to one another. A very important scientific fact is being described here, the separation of the heavens and the earth. Intriguingly, at the first moments of the Big Bang, the entire matter of the universe collected at one single point, the heavens and earth which were not created yet, were within this single point. Then, this point exploded violently, causing its matter to disunite. This is just as is described in the verse. People 14 centuries ago, of course, possessed no scientific knowledge or technology by which to know that the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars, and everything they saw, or that which was invisible in the skies, had initially been united in a single point. In the Quran, God calls our attention to a very important attribute of the sky. We made the sky a preserved and protected roof, yet still they turn away from our signs. The protective nature of the sky revealed in the Quran was only discovered in our own time. The atmosphere surrounding the earth protects us from lethal dangers. While destroying many meteors big and small as they approach the earth, it prevents them from falling to earth and harming life. It filters the light rays coming from space that are harmful to living things. It also protects the earth from the freezing cold of the space, 
which is approximately minus 270 degrees Celsius. In addition to the atmosphere, there is another layer caused by the magnetic field of the Earth, which serves as a shield against the harmful radiation that threatens our planet. The Van Allen Belts. Thanks to the Van Allen Belts, the massive outbursts of energy called solar flares that frequently occur in the sun do not destroy life on Earth. In short, a perfect system is at work high above the Earth. It surrounds our world and protects it against external threats. Strikingly, this was revealed 1400 years ago in the Quran. Another verse imparting the same information reads, It is he who made the earth a couch for you, and the sky a dome. Here the sky is described as Al-Sama Bina in Arabic. As well as the meaning of dome or ceiling, this word has another meaning. It also describes a kind of tent-like covering used by the Arab Bedouin. By describing the sky as a tent-like structure, the Quran is emphasizing that it is a form of protection against external elements. This is the protection the atmosphere affords against meteors and cosmic rays. All these facts show that this information obtained by humanity as the result of lengthy scientific research was imparted 1400 years ago in the Quran when there were no spacecrafts or giant telescopes. The Earth consists of seven strata. The first layer is the hydrosphere, which embodies all the waters on the Earth's surface. The second layer, the lithosphere, is a hard stratum forming the Earth's top layer. Its average thickness is 80 kilometers. It is colder and harder than the other strata and therefore forms the Earth's shell. The third layer is the asthenosphere. It is formed of hot, semi-solid, meltable substances. The fourth and fifth layers, the upper mantle and the lower mantle respectively, form a high temperature region some 2,900 kilometers thick, made up of semi-solid rocks. The Earth's core consists of two parts. One is the 2,200 kilometer thick liquid outer core, the other a 1,250 kilometer thick solid inner core, the sixth and the seventh layers respectively. The fact that the Earth is made up of such strata was only known as the result of lengthy research using 20th century technology. Yet God imparted this information to us in the Quran which he imbued with many scientific miracles 14 centuries ago. It is God who created the seven heavens and of the earth the same number, the command descending down through all of them so that you might know that God has power over all things and that God encompasses all things in his knowledge. It was at the beginning of the 20th century when a German scientist, Alfred Wagner, 
proposed that the continents of the Earth had been attached together when it first formed, but then drifted in different directions and thus separated as they moved away from each other. This theory of Wagoners was proved in the 1980s. It was found that the six major plates and several small ones, which form the crust and the uppermost part of the mantle, were in constant motion. According to the theory called plate tectonics, these plates move about on Earth, carrying continents and the ocean floor with them. This motion has been measured at one to five centimeters per year. Consequently, this produces a slow change in Earth's geography. Each year, for instance, the Atlantic Ocean becomes slightly wider. Science discovered this only recently. The fact that it was revealed 14 centuries ago in the Quran is, without doubt, another of the book's many miracles. You see the mountains you reckon to be solid, going past like clouds. God referred to the motion of the mountains in the verse of the Quran. Today, scientists use the term continental drift for this motion. It is without doubt a great miracle that this scientific fact should have been revealed in the seventh century when conceptions of the nature of the universe were based on superstition and myth. This is another very important proof that the Quran is the word of God. The outer layer of the Earth's atmosphere consists of a great many gases, particularly oxygen. However, energy explosions on the sun cause some of these gases to disperse into space. Researchers have obtained its first concrete evidence thanks to the NASA spacecraft. It was first observed that the Earth experiences a loss of matter from its outer layers on September 24th and 25th, 1998. In other words, this occurred 14 centuries after this information was imparted in the Quran. Don't they see how we come to the land, eroding it at its extremities? These verses may also be referring to the loss of land on Earth in another regard. At the present time, the polar ice caps are melting and the water level in the oceans is rising. As coastal areas come underwater, the land surface or total amount of land is decreasing. The expression, eroding it from its extremities in the verses, may well be pointing to coastal areas being covered by water. God knows best. The British physicist Paul Dirac, who won the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1933, made a most important discovery. This finding, known as parity, revealed the duality known as matter and antimatter. Antimatter bears the opposite characteristics to matter. For instance, contrary to matter, antimatter electrons have a positive charge, while protons have a negative electric charge. Nobody was aware of this scientific fact when the Quran was revealed 1400 years ago. Yet, it was clearly revealed in verses that everything in the universe has been created in pairs. A verse in the Quran shows this as follows. 
Glory be to Him who created all the pairs, from what the earth produces, and from themselves, and from things unknown to them. Up until 20 years ago, it was believed that the smallest particles were the protons and neutrons that comprise the atom. However, advances in science and technology disproved this. It was realized that the atom, regarded as the smallest unit of matter, could be divided into even smaller subcomponents. A specialized branch of physics emerged to study these subparticles and their particular behavior. Particle Physics Particle physics research has revealed that the protons and the neutrons that comprise the atom actually consist of subparticles known as quarks. This fact only emerged in the last century, but it was revealed in the Quran. He is the knower of the unseen, whom not an atom's weight eludes, either in the heavens or in the earth, nor is there anything smaller or larger than that which is not in a clear book. In another verse, God tells us that, Not even an atom's weight eludes your Lord, either on earth or in heaven, nor is there anything smaller than that or larger which is not in a clear book. This verse refers to atom and smaller particles still. The fact that there are even smaller subunits was imparted to humanity in the Quran 14 centuries ago. The 20th century saw a great many new discoveries regarding celestial phenomena in the universe. One of these is the black hole. When a star has consumed all its fuel, it collapses in on itself, eventually turning into a region with infinite density and zero volume and an immensely powerful magnetic field. This is called a black hole. We are unable to see black holes, even with the most powerful telescope, because their gravitational pull is so strong that even light is unable to escape from them. Their presence, however, can be perceived by means of the magnetic effect they have on the surrounding area. In the Quran, God draws attention to this matter in this way. And I swear by the star's positions, and that is a mighty oath, if you only knew. All stars with large masses set up gravitational fields in space. A black hole constantly increases its density and thus gravitational attraction by drawing everything around it or that passes by it into itself. In this sense it resembles a hole in space into which everything around it is pulled. That is why they are known as black holes. This information about stars in the Quran is also remarkable. I swear by heaven and the Tariq, and what will convey to you what the Tariq is? The star piercing, the darkness.
electricity. It is one of the greatest discoveries in the history of the world. It lights almost the entire world by means of bulbs. In fact, this great discovery was noted in verses of the Quran 14 centuries ago. God is the light of the heavens and the earth. The metaphor of his light is that of a niche in which is a lamp, the lamp inside a glass, the glass like a brilliant star lit from a blessed tree, an olive, neither of the east nor of the west, its oil all but giving off light, even if no fire touches it. Light upon light. God guides to his light whoever he wills, and God makes metaphors for mankind, and God has knowledge of all things. This verse refers to something that emits light. It appears that this body miraculously refers to the light bulbs used almost everywhere on earth in the present day. A bulb is a body which shines like a star and emits light inside glass and that is in full conformity with the description in the verse. The fact that the fuel used by this light-emitting body belongs to neither east nor west may be an indication that it has no physical dimensions. Electricity, the fuel of the light bulb, indeed is not in material dimension, but in an energy dimension. Unlike oil lamps and gas lamps, light bulbs burn without fire, in line with the description supplied in the verse. In light of all this information, it may be inferred that this verse is referring to the light bulb, a most important invention. God knows best. In one verse of the Qur'an, the fecundating characteristic of the winds and the resulting formation of rain are mentioned. And we send the fecundating winds, then cause water to descend from the sky, therewith providing you with water in abundance. This fact set out in the Qur'an was definitely unknown until the beginning of the 20th century. Until then, the only relationship known between the wind and the rain was that it was the wind that drove the clouds. However, today's meteorological findings have demonstrated the fecundating role of the wind in the formation of rain. According to these findings, on the surface of oceans and seas, a large number of air bubbles form because of the water's foaming action. The moment these bubbles burst, thousands of tiny particles with a diameter of just one hundredth of a millimeter are thrown up into the air. These particles, known as aerosols, mix with dust carried from the land by the wind and are carried to the upper layers of the atmosphere. These particles carried to higher altitudes by winds come into contact with water vapor up there. Water vapor condenses around these particles and turns into water droplets. These water droplets first come together and form clouds and then fall to the earth in the form of rain. In short, the formation of rain comes when winds fecundate the clouds with the aerosols in just the same way it was revealed in the Quran at a time when people knew next to nothing about natural phenomena.
Research carried out in recent years has revealed that the prefrontal area, lying in the frontal part of the skull, is responsible for the management of particular functions of the brain. This area of the cerebrum is also responsible for planning, motivation, and initiating good and evil behavior, and it is responsible for telling lies and the truth. A book entitled Essentials of Anatomy and Physiology says, in relation to its involvement in motivation, the prefrontal area is also thought to be the functional center for aggression. Parallel information to these scientific facts discovered by scientists in the last 60 years was also imparted in the Quran 14 centuries ago. No, indeed, if he does not stop, we will grab him by the forelock, a lying, sinful forelock. The expression, the lying, sinful forelock, in this verse is most remarkable. This demonstrates a close parallel to the activities carried out in the front part of the brain. What determines the gender of an unborn child? According to the Quran, the answer lies in its father. Masculinity or femininity is created out of a drop of semen which has been ejected. Gender is determined by the sperm cells from the male and that the female has no role in this process. The verses that tell us this read, He has created both sexes male and female, from a drop of semen which has been ejected. Wasn't he a drop of ejaculated sperm, then an embryo which he created and shaped, making from it both sexes, male and female? The developing disciplines of genetics and molecular biology have scientifically validated the accuracy of this information given in the Quran. A baby's gender is determined by which chromosome, X or Y, from the male unites with the female's ovum. None of this was known until the discovery of genes in the 20th century. Indeed, in many cultures, it was believed that the female determined the gender of a baby. This is one reason why women were blamed when they gave birth to girls. Fourteen centuries before human genes were discovered, however, the Quran revealed information that denies this superstition and referred to the origin of gender lying not with women, but with the semen deriving from men. That is because the Quran is the Word of God. When the sperm of the male unites with the ovum of the female, the essence of the baby to be born is formed. This single cell is known as a zygote. It will instantly begin reproducing by dividing and eventually become a piece of flesh called an embryo. The embryo, however, does not spend its developmental period in a void. It clings to the uterus, similar to roots that are firmly fixed to the earth by its tendrils. Through this bond, it can obtain the substances essential to its development from the mother's body. Here, an important miracle of the Qur'an is revealed. While referring to the embryo developing in the mother's womb, God uses the word alak. Recite, 
in the name of your Lord who created man from Alak. Recite, and your Lord is the most generous. The meaning of the word Alak in Arabic is a thing that clings to some place. Certainly the use of such a specific word for the embryo developing in the mother's womb proves once again that the Quran is the word of God, the Lord of all the worlds. Another important item of information provided in the verses of the Qur'an is the developmental stages of a human being in the mother's womb. We then form the drop in the embryo and form the embryo into a lump and form the lump into bones and clothed the bones in flesh and then brought him into being as another creature Blessed be God, the best of creators. It is clearly stated in these verses that in the mother's womb, the bones develop first and then the muscles form which wrap around them. Until very recently, embryologists assumed that the bones and muscles in an embryo developed at the same time. Yet research conducted by virtue of new technological developments has yielded such accurate conclusions. These researched findings are just as it is described in the Quran. First, the cartilage tissues of the embryo ossifies. Then, muscular cells that are selected from amongst the tissue around the bones come together and wrap around the bones. This event is described in a scientific publication titled Developing Human in the following words. The shape of the skeleton determines the general appearance of the embryo in the bone stages during the seventh week. Muscles do not develop at the same time, but their development follows soon after. The muscles take their positions around the bones throughout the body and therefore clothe the bones. Thus, the muscles take their well-known forms and structures. The stage of clothing with muscles occurs during the eighth week. In short, developmental stages of man, as described in the Quran, are in perfect harmony with the findings of modern embryology. Emeritus Professor Keith Moore of the Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology at the University of Toronto is one of the eminent embryologists in the world. He is one of those scholars who have identified this miracle in the Quran. Professor Moore examined the verses concerning human birth and announced his conclusions in these words. It has been a great pleasure for me to help clarify statements in the Qur'an about human development. It is clear to me that these statements must have come to Prophet Muhammad from God, or Allah, because most of this knowledge was not discovered until many centuries later. This proves to me that Prophet Muhammad must have been a messenger of God, or Allah. People who remain lying down in the same position for a long period of time encounter serious health problems. Due to the constant pressure on one part of the body when one is not moving for a long period of time, the blood vessels become constricted and can close altogether. As a result, the oxygen and other nutrients carried by the blood fail to reach the skin and the skin begins to die. This leads to the appearance of sores on the body. These sores are known as bed sores or pressure sores. 
These sores, which form under the skin or tissue, can assume serious dimensions unless treated. If they become infected, they can even lead to death. The healthiest thing to do, therefore, is to frequently change the position of the body in order to reduce this pressure. Patients who cannot move themselves therefore receive special care and are moved every two hours by others. The importance of movement during sleep was only realized in the 20th century. Yet information pointing to this importance was also set out in the Quran, the word of God. You would have supposed them to be awake, whereas in fact they were asleep. We moved them to the right and to the left. This verse refers to the companions of the cave who remained asleep for hundreds of years. In addition, God also reveals that he moved their bodies to the left and right while they were asleep. The fact that these medical facts discovered in our own century were also noted in the Quran is without doubt another of its miracles. All that we have seen in the scientific miracles of the Qur'an films shows us one clear fact. The Qur'an is such a book that all the information it contains has been and is being found to be true. Facts about scientific subjects, facts that no one could have known at the time of the Qur'an's revelation, are announced in its verses. It is impossible for such information to have been known with the level of knowledge and technology available in 7th century Arabia. This, of course, is manifest proof that the Quran cannot be the word of man. In the Quran, God tells us the following. This Quran could never have been devised by any besides God. Rather, it is confirmation of what came before it and an elucidation of the book which contains no doubt from the Lord of all the worlds. Do they say he has invented it? Say, then produce a surah like it and call on anyone you can besides God if you are telling the truth. <laughs>